नमस्कार दोस्तों I welcome you all in today's podcast. Uh, we have a special guest today, Dr. Kusuma Jagdish. She is uh, currently doing uh, her postdoc from IIC Bangalore. Uh, so, Dr. Kusuma Jagdish, I welcome you in today's podcast. Thank you so much, Dharo. So, uh, we will have quick uh, rapid fire questions. Okay. And uh, you have to answer in yes, no, or never. Okay. Okay. So, if someone decided to go for uh, academia, then only they should join postdoc. No. No, interesting. <laughs> I will uh, tell in the later part. Oh, uh, sure, yeah. Okay. So, your research supervisor don't help in your postdoc. Is it true? Not really. Okay, interesting. So, what we know till now uh, that is uh, different is coming from you. Yeah. So, it will be really going to be uh, interesting podcast. So, yeah, the second phase of this uh, rapid fire question, you have to choose only. Uh, you have been in USA for a long time. Yes. And you are an Indian uh, born. So, choose one option: USA or India. I think India. <laughs> Great. Okay. <laughs> So, Dr. Kusuma, can you please introduce yourself and uh, just give your academic background? Sure. So, I'm Kusuma Jagdish and uh, I'm currently enrolled as an high postdoctoral postdoctoral fellow at the uh, Department of Materials Engineering. Yes. So, previously I uh, completed my PhD in uh, nanotechnology from mm -hmm. Jain University, where we have a separate center for uh, nano and material sciences. Yeah. And uh, I completed my master's in physics. Mm -hmm. So this is my basic education background. So mm -hmm. after my MSc, I was uh, uh, serving as like assistant professor at PS University for an engineering college. Mm -hmm. yes. Then later I joined PhD and mm -hmm. pursued all this. Mm -hmm. After my PhD, due to marriage, I was in US for one and a half years. Mm -hmm. So uh, we had to for some visa reasons mm -hmm. and uh, currently, like from last one year, I've been in uh, IIC as yes. a part of uh, Dr. Sachin's team. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's my basic education background. Yeah, that's interesting. Physics, then material science. Yes. Okay. I think they are more like interdisciplinary. So, yeah. it's it's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. And we thought that once we choose our stream, we should continue in that field. What you want to say about that? Uh, so, let's say when I, I joined here for a PhD in aerospace department, uh, my BTEC is from mechanical department. I had a very tough decision to join aerospace okay. because our thought is like we should uh, follow the same stream and mechanical then do postdoc in mechanical then I go think for more uh, than stream your interest matters because yeah. the interest will push you towards what you want to learn. Mm -hmm. So basically material science is a combination of physics and chemistry. So I was uh, good at synthesis skills. Mm -hmm. So, I am good at some part of physics also. Mm -hmm. So, I think those combination will work well for me in materials physics. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. that's what made me to choose materials science mm -hmm. and I was quite interested in that. Yeah, great. Uh, so, YouTube analytics tells that so many parents also watch my podcast. Mm -hmm. So, for general audience, can you tell what is the postdoc? Okay. So, basically, postdoc is after your PhD. Yeah. So, that is like uh, you take up an independent research work mm -hmm. in under some supervision yeah. where you are being given a minimal or no supervision at all. Great. So this is like a temporary opportunities mm -hmm. if you want to um, unravel your future opportunities. Mm -hmm. In my rapid trial, you, you ask me like if uh, people if want to go to academia only when they have to choose postdoc. Yeah. Yeah. That is. Not exactly true because mm -hmm. see if uh, you have done PhD mm -hmm. and sometimes what happens you never get an opportunity to explore your interest in PhD where you are so, given certain objectives of your supervisor where mm -hmm. you work towards that. Mm -hmm. In case you have some mm -hmm. interest to explore, mm -hmm. I think after PhD uh, one year or mm -hmm. two years max you can Explore that opportunity. Like mm -hmm. you can see where you fit well, in the academia suits you or industry suits you. Yeah. So I think it is an opportunity. It is not like if you do a long postdoc mm -hmm. and like five to six years postdoc and you want to be in academia, then it's a little ne on the negative side. Mm -hmm. But if you want to be in academia, having a lot many postdoc, it is still okay. Okay. But uh, if you want to get into industry, it is better you decide in the first one to two years of your postdoc. Mm -hmm. So that lot of 
postdoctoral experience is not very good for industry actually. Mm-hmm. But when you are in industry, it is easy for you to come back to postdoc. I mean, like academia. So it is like you should give that uh, place for yourself wherein you decide because mm-hmm. it is sometimes uh, not easy to decide mm-hmm. in your PhD because you didn't got an opportunity to know more. Yeah. But maybe after you conduct your independent research as a postdoc. Mm-hmm. This will uh, let you understand what mm. you want it actually in the future. Mm, so that time you can actually switch mm. to industry or mm. academia, whatever that mm-hmm. means to you want to take it up. Yeah, great. And I think you perfectly define what is a postdoc. Yes. Yeah. So moving forward, uh, so after PhD we go for postdoc, yes. as you said. Yes. So when we should start applying for postdoc? Okay. So from my experience, what I think is that when you are about to start your thesis. Mm-hmm. Okay, parallelly start your process of applying for postdoc. Okay, because when you start applying, it doesn't happen immediately. Sure. I think when I started to apply, I started to write my thesis. Mm-hmm. After five months, I got my first reply for postdoc. For postdoc. Okay. okay. So, from my personal experience, I think three things work mm-hmm. in your PhD. Try to see who else is working in the same field first. Yeah. Try to follow their works during your PhD itself, mm. and in your PhD, if you get an opportunity, mm. like uh, as a visiting researcher or any sandwich program between India and that particular mm. country, okay. try to mm. get in touch with those professor, mm. go for their lab, mm. understand what they are doing. Mm. So for three months or six months, we have multiple fellowship during our PhDs, right? I want to interrupt you. Like yes, how sure. difficult it is to get this uh, oh. sandwich fellowship or uh, any visiting fellowship. I think uh, it is quite difficult okay. because uh, I think uh, like uh, after your second year of PhD, mm-hmm. just get an exp one year experience in your PhD of. Whatever you are working with, either theoretical or computation, get hands on. Just try to know, like, because when you are doing the literature survey, you know who is good in that particular yeah. field, right? So when you see that they are doing good work, you just try to reach out to them. Meanwhile, they might not have open position. They don't put on the website so many times. You have to write an email to the professors expressing your interest and what you would like to work very briefly. So when they have their fellowship from their country, they suggest you to apply. Mm. But in some institutes, they have an MOU signed between mm. the university mm. where you write a proposal yeah. and then you go on with that basis. Okay. So that is the two opportunities. Mm. Like during a PhD, uh, get that network collaboration with mm. different people that you want to work with. Okay, okay that is one good thing. Mm. And if possible, like most of the professors will have collaboration. Like if mm-hmm. they would have done their postdocs in different countries, mm-hmm. their PIs would then be in touch. Mm-hmm. So through that connection, mm-hmm. try to uh, make some connections. Mm-hmm. Like if you are uh, doing some work, mm-hmm. a part of it will be conducted by them. Mm-hmm. So you will have a combination of authors in your paper. Mm-hmm. So that can also be a uh, small step for you to. Take it ahead. Okay. So that is one more thing. I think more than applying for the job posting, mm-hmm. it is always preferred. I mean, like the majority of the replies I got mm-hmm. was more like when I reached out to them personally mm-hmm. for the professors, saying what kind of work in the group interests me and why do I want to be there and what fits me to be in that lab. So do you write directly to mail to them? Yes, or? I write to the professors. Hmm. I usually write and wait for a week. Hmm. Sometimes usually they reply in two to three days. Hmm. Sometimes they don't reply. I'll try to give at least uh, one week time, and I'll do at Remind. least two follow up emails. Okay. So I will wait hmm. because professors are kind of busy. Hmm. They get a lot of mails actually. Yeah. So we need to understand that, but. We need to have little patience and the perseverance to carry on that. Mm-hmm. So I think then at least two to three follow-ups will ca- attract their attention. Once. So they will reach out to you. Okay. If they have any position, they let you know. Or if they have alternate fellowships, they will suggest you. Mm-hmm. So on that basis, you can actually explore those opportunities. Mm-hmm. So always give yourself at least one year time. Think when you are anticipating that you will be completing your PhD in the next year. Okay, so let's say uh, my PhD is going to complete uh, next uh, next year at October. Yes, Today, uh, you should start right now. Right now, right now start. you start hmm. and take baby steps. Okay. Like 
how to reach out to the professor how do you frame your emails okay. mm-hmm. because if not it should not be lengthy okay so you should be very precise and crisp and tell what exactly you want so to do break down what are the process like how we approach to the professor what content should go for email to okay propose so basically when you are uh, reaching out to professor first do a background of whatever the research they do okay. and see how well you match see mm-hmm. if you don't match exactly to whatever mm-hmm. they are working mm-hmm. it is very unlikely to get a reply okay so say suppose i am working on uh, photovoltaics okay. and i am working on certain set of materials mm-hmm. so if that group is also working similar materials mm-hmm. then i reach out to the professor for saying that i am so and so i am anticipating my uh, phd to be completed by so and so time mm-hmm. and i want to get in contact with you because i have been following your work for a uh, few years in my phd i find it very interesting and i want to be part of your team to explore my research interest further mm-hmm. so i think this is a great opportunity if you can reach out to me back and attach your cv okay not do not uh, include too many things at once mm-hmm. so maybe when he gets a reply he would be interested to know certain things mm-hmm. then you can share so uh, all your uh, degree certificate everything else comes in the end actually okay. so initially if the guide feels you from your cv that mm-hmm. most of your work matches with their research interest mm-hmm. they will surely reach out to you back mm-hmm. if they have the opportunity and if even if they don't have the opportunity they keep your series okay because after a year i have received at least two to three replies after one I mean, year of email oh, <laughs> so it is i think the way you approach is very important mm-hmm. so make an attempt to that and mm-hmm. don't lose hope sometimes you may not receive a reply but uh, make sure you send a follow up for mm-hmm. sure uh, at least some of them will get a reply Okay. Okay. So, what is the percentage reply you get? Uh, like, let's say you say, say uh, I send for at least some ten, I would get at least four replies. Great. At least you will get some four. Mm-hmm. Saying at least one will say there is no funding currently, okay. or uh, they don't have a uh, like uh, a place to occupy another student. Okay. They have them like, restricted the uh, students, and mm-hmm. they want to take care of the mm-hmm. in different countries. The lab cultures are quite different. Mm-hmm. so usually the scientists prefer like if they are going for any kind of opportunities later after 6 months they want only a certain student so that he can focus properly because in europe and all like uh, mostly some 30 70 like 30% of work is taken care mm-hmm. by the professors and mm-hmm. 70% is by students so they make sure they give an importance to every student so that time they don't want to take any other extra members okay. so there will be some options like that so they just write back to you say and uh, if they don't have funding they suggest to like when i go to uk france and all so i used to get back uh, because my profile was good they asked me to apply for the literary fellowship and all mm-hmm. so they will suggest to so it is always good Right or wrong, and if you don't miss, get a reply, it is okay. Uh, you don't have to lose your art. But certainly, some people will reply you, giving you an option, or if they are interested, they'll interview you. They'll see how your skill set matches, and are you you will be compatible with other people. So those kind of steps will take on later. So you mentioned about CV. CV can be a Uh, important factor for your selection. Mm. So, can we break down the CV? How how many pages we should write? What content should be there? Okay, so like since we are in PhD, so we should try to constrain to at least maximum two pages. Maximum two pages. Maximum two pages. Two pages. Mm. And minimum Which will, how much? Uh, one page. Minimum one, one page. page. Yes. One to two page. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Great. Don't exceed more than three to four pages mm. because. It's too much where you are putting everything, which yeah. is not required. And the professor might not be having time to read time all to this. Time to read all that. If you are writing in flowery language. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, basically, include like uh, first few lines. Tell about what you are very good at. So okay. give an introduction of hmm. what kind of a person, hmm. what are your passions, and why do you fit into particular. Sectors of your field. Mm-hmm. Give a few lines, like bulletin points, five to six points, mm-hmm. saying about yourself. Mm-hmm. Then follows your uh, education, wherein mm-hmm. uh, you will say about the latest education, followed by the. Uh, mm-hmm. Do not put a 
all your ten standard twelve mm-hmm. standard, then it's better to stick till BSc. Okay. Or your B Tech or whatever right. the bachelors, okay. bachelors, masters, and PhD or bachelors. Some people would have got like from bachelors to direct PhD, so mm-hmm. just hide them. Okay. And if you have got any projects, mm-hmm. particularly in B Tech and Tech, put those projects under mm-hmm. that. And if those uh, supervisors are willing to refer you, mm-hmm. add them also there. So that you work mm-hmm. under this particular professor. Mm-hmm. So when you you should add a references at the end of your uh, CV. CV. Mm-hmm. So these the same people can be there. So mm-hmm. that it will be easy for the professor to reach out to them. Mm-hmm. Okay. So after education, if before education, if you have had in any uh, uh, industry, if you have worked for a year or some teaching, whatever mm-hmm. you have done in between, you just try to add that also. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. After that, you have your education, mm-hmm. and if you have any, if you have got any uh, travel fellowship awards, mm-hmm. like sandwich programs, mm-hmm. that you add it in the next mm-hmm. section, mm-hmm. and uh, followed by if you have any publications mm-hmm. where uh, you would have published some in journals, mm-hmm. try to mention that you are the first author or you are the okay. co-author mm-hmm. because I think if you are the picture also. Uh, you have a good collaborative skills. Okay, so that so, is not a disadvantage. It's not a disadvantage. Mm. Certainly, it is a good one mm. because it will show that you are not independently working on your mm. own, but mm. you are able to talk with some person, mm. work with him. That's so you good. have a good uh, communication and uh, supervising skills or whatever. Mm. Like you have the collaborative skills. Mm. So don't hesitate if you have some third author, fourth author. Nothing is yes. okay. If you have contributed to that paper, mm. it is always an addition to your mm. CV. Great. So followed by publication, you would have attended some uh, great big workshops, mm. summer schools, winter schools, mm-hmm. and also like poster presentation, oral presentation. Mm. So pick up your the best mm. five, six, like not. If you have done like some ten fifteen, don't mm. add all ten fifteen, but choose the best five or six mm. and put them. Okay. And uh, followed by it will be a referees. Mm. So at least three referees would ask. One is one will be your uh, PhD supervisor. Mm. Most of them, it is necessary. Some only some people don't look for that supervisor mm. because some will have a different experience. Mm. So they don't want to give their PhD supervisor. Mm. So it depends. So at least three referees. What do referees do? Like what is the work here? Referees like uh, see if you are approaching a new professor, they don't know in and out of you. Yeah. So how do you basically work? Are you really interested? Are you approaching? What's your motto? What's your goal? What's your aim? So those things are usually understood by your PI, right? Like your mm-hmm. PhD supervisor. He knows you better than mm-hmm. any other person. So I think some academic referees will add an uh, important point to your CV. I think mm-hmm. because uh, any postdoc application you apply, they will ask for at least one or two references for sure. Mm-hmm. So you need someone who will know you very well. Like how good are you at your academics? Mm-hmm. How are you at your different skills? Mm-hmm. What are your skills you have acquired? Mm-hmm. So those things matters a lot. Actually. So this is like the old. Outline of CV. So you need to have your uh, self introduction a bit, mm. followed by education background. And if you have any uh, like research activities mm. apart from your PhD and things that you have done for a year okay. or two, add that. Mm. Followed by any kind of awards, mm. uh, the fellowships you have been got. Mm. Then uh, followed by uh, your publications, mm. conferences, okay. and okay. references. Okay. That's all. It has okay. to fit into two pages. Mm. That will be good. Okay. Yeah, perfectly explained. Okay. Yes. Great. Uh, interview is a crucial parameter to select someone for postdoc. So, what is your experience? How many interview you have appeared? I have appeared around like ten, around ten maybe till now. Mm-hmm. I think most of them I have gone through. Like out of ten, mm-hmm. at least eight I have gone through the interview process. Mm-hmm. But uh, when I was in US, I couldn't go because of my uh, work visa issue, mm-hmm. and it was a different thing which I couldn't take it up later. Mm-hmm. So basically, your interview process is like uh, we will have a micro, uh, like mm-hmm. online uh, meeting with them. So mm-hmm. where you make a small PPT, mm-hmm. what you have worked on, 
Yeah. Not a detailed one like how we present for a viva, but okay. a small PPT where you talk about what you have worked, what mm-hmm. are your skills, mm-hmm. what is the transferable skills that you have learned, mm-hmm. and what are your publications. What do you mean by transferable? Transferable skills is like whatever you have learned, you are able to impart to the others. Like okay. uh, you must have developed some kind of synthesis procedure in the lab. Mm-hmm. You teach your junior. Mm-hmm. They are able to do it. So that that is also a transferable skill where you are, uh, you have that habit of teaching. Mm. So there are many transferable skills yes. like communication. Mm. So there yeah. are many things. Yeah. So basically, they expect how good are you at? Mm. Because when you come to a postdoc, mm. apart from doing your own work, mm. another thing that has is supervision. Mm-hmm. How good are you at supervision actually? Mm. Because uh, there will be many postdocs, like some seven to ten for uh, PhDs, and there are only one or two. Mm-hmm. So most of the things you can't go and discuss with your PI because True. you won't be available all the time. Yeah. So postdocs are kind of uh, they come to you because there are many tools yeah. that we learn in the process. There are many softwares that we have to get used mm-hmm. to when we are uh, analyzing some data. They are all new to it. Hardly they will know some basics. So you should be good at that. You cannot just say, I am here to do this work, I am going to do this. So that's not going to work. So that you have to understand because if you want to be in academia, this is something that you have to learn. Because you will be managing your own team few years down the line. So these are all the managerial skills, supervision skills that you have to acquire during your postdoc. Mm. So supervision activity is something uh, that comes like uh, by default mm. and uh, where you will be working on one project. Sometimes you get to work on some projects which your PI also wants to work on. Okay. So there is like you have some freedom to work what you want to do and uh, like not restricted to certain projects in your PhD, but you have this uh, freedom to explore so many things and you have the opportunity to attend uh, uh, various uh, workshops, seminars, because this is a more space to uh, develop your individual self as a researcher. So, and basically in interview questions, what happens is that they usually uh, see how good are you at your uh, subject. First thing they see is that how well it matches with the group, okay. the topic. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it's very unlikely because mm-hmm. most of them uh, don't like the people to be deviated a lot from their topic. Mm-hmm. Some suppose uh, like I was interested in computational uh, um, computational mm-hmm. science, mm-hmm. so. I was basically an experimentalist in PhD, mm-hmm. but I thought I should give it a try because I found it somewhat interesting. Mm-hmm. But when I approached professors, mm-hmm. but they were like, you are good at something, mm-hmm. just carry on with that. It is very unlikely that you get a professor who would uh, support you that. But there are, there are some people, they will let you explore it, but not the completely switching the domain. So, uh, in the interviews questions, they usually ask like how well we fit the team mm-hmm. and what kind of skills I can bring into their lab and like uh, what are the possibilities or uh, uh, that I can acquire my own funding uh, because sometimes it will be only for a few months in that few months you have an ability to write a project and get secure a funding for that. Mm-hmm. So they, they just look on these mm-hmm. and uh, they'll try to uh, put some questions like uh, if there are few students under you mm-hmm. and uh, one or one person doesn't want to listen to you mm-hmm. and how do you tackle, tackle such situations mm-hmm. and how do you make people work? Mm-hmm. That's interesting. That's, <laughs> so they, they do ask such questions like how do you manage those things? and uh, how helpful I am and uh, yeah these are the like basics like usually when after we talk about the topic these are the different mm. questions they usually ask us mm. so uh, basically I am a senior in my lab okay. we don't have any postdoc okay and I deal with such uh, uh, things like uh, handling some students uh, like so I think the postdoc can do better I guess yes yeah. yes mm. What questions they ask? Like, on huh, so basically, more uh, topic wise, 
like if you are confident i think they can gauge you based on your presentation sometimes they'll have very little questions on the topic but how you fit into their team is all that matters to them so they'll ask about your supervision activity you uh, supervise any undergrad or uh, okay. master projects mm-hmm. so what are the different projects that you worked with mm. and how good are you at managing the people mm. and do they ask about, about your projects and phd project like what yeah they do ask because usually initially when you give a presentation you will be talking about your uh, actual work what you have done in your doctoral thesis right mm-hmm. so based on that there will be few questions on that mm-hmm. and apart from that uh, basically they try to see like uh, how well you can fit into the team okay more of easy. that is important to them mm-hmm. actually Yeah. Major Thanks. things, yes. Okay. So, any tips you want to give for uh, post doc aspirants who are going to give some interview? For interview, more before interview, I would uh, suggest like try to have some network, mm-hmm. build your network, try to attend a conference. So, when you get an opportunity to meet uh, those scientists who has worked in your field and try to talk to them. Like we are little hesitant. We feel that we don't know things much. We we always feel little in fear, but they are kind of very nice. When you actually go talk to them, you feel really good. So you should always build that networking uh, opportunity with uh, the professors. One thing, and if you get an opportunity to visit different labs across the country or. Across the globe, always give it a try because different lab culture will teach you a lot of things. Okay.